Alright, two tech troubleshooting tutorials, Live Cycle 101 Part 3. Today we're going to create our first form. And I'm going to use this form, which I call Form Letter Sample, as our first form we're going to create. But we're not going to start here, we're going to end here. We're going to start with our template. And so the first thing we need to do to begin this project is to create some objects. I'm going to create two subforms that's going to be my header and my footer objects and I'm going to grab four text fields and as I do all this I'm going to rename these things so I'm going to call them subform header SF for subform subform footer and then I'm going to organize them in the hierarchy as they're organized on the sheet of paper. And I'll call this TXT client. TXT stands for text address. And I'll call the last one TXT salutation. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to first go to my master page and reduce the margins of the whole document. So you see this whole document has about a quarter inch margin and we can see that on the ruler here. The content area of the master page is this purple dashed line and basically what that represents is where you're going to be allowed to put objects on your design view. So you can't put this object anywhere outside of this content area and that's defined on the master page. Now we'll go into more details on master pages later but suffice it to say this time I just want to make my margins half inch so I'm going to adjust the master page content area to allow for that. And as I do that you can tell on the design page now that shrinks the allowable size of my objects especially my subforms here. So I'm going to create my subforms just the same width as the content area will allow. All right, then I have my four text fields and this one I'm going to make the full length and this one I'm going to make the full length and also a little bit bigger and then this one I'm going to drag down into this subform down here. Salutation. Okay, so that's step one. We just have our object sit here. Now I also want to talk about some other objects we're going to use. We're going to use an image object for a logo at the top. So I'm going to drag that image and I'm going to place it inside the subform called subform header. And of course I'm going to immediately change the name to IMG logo just to keep up with my naming convention. So now this object, IMG logo, doesn't have any defined file associated with it. And in order to do that, I'm going to click on the file, cl uh, the file button there, and then go find my image. And so here's a bunch of images I've got, and I'm going to use my TrueTech troubleshooting logo here, and it's set to scale proportionally, and I'm going to scale it up a little bit and then I'm going to click this embed image data and what that does is just embeds the actual file, the image file, in the XML source and so if you were to click on XML source you would see this big blob object here embedded in the document. It makes your resulting PDF bigger but it also allows um, for you to edit the file later without any problems. Okay. Now I'm going to add a couple more objects. I'm going to go get a text object. I'm going to bring that in here. and That's going to be my address. I'm going to call that label address. And now my header is basically done besides putting the actual address in there. I'm going to make that 12 left justified centered. And now I can put in put in my text. I want to make this bold so I'm going to go back to my font tab and make that bold. Alright there we go. Shrink that down a little bit. 
All right, and now this field right here is going to be where I put in my client name. So I'm, and I, I called that client, but I also want to give the end user an idea of what this is for. So I'm going to drag another text object here, call this label client, and then make this exactly the same size as the height of this text object. And in there, I'm going to enter in the information to give instructions to the end user. All right. Now, here's one key thing I want to do with this. I don't want this to print out on any of my final uh, form letters that, I'm, that I might be creating with this form. So I'm going to change this to visible screen only. So it's only visible to the person filling out the form. And once they print it, all right, I'm going to put that address E. I'm going to put that address object right below that. And this is going to be necessary to make this expandable. In other words, the address will be like this address. It's going to have more than one line, but we don't know how many lines they're going to need. So we need to click on that and allow for multiple lines. And then we need to go to the Layout tab and say Expand to Fit. Now, right now, we don't have a flowed form. We're going to change that in a minute. Uh, but, but suffice it to say that we want this to expand the fit. We want this to get bigger as the user needs it to get bigger. And the same is true for this paragraph object. We want this to be expanding to fit and allow multiple lines too, because we don't know how much they're going to type in all of this. Okay, then in the bottom subform, as we move this up, we also want to have a signature field so they can sign the form. Put that here, and we're going to remove the caption because we want the we want the caption to be editable, and we're going to have to create our own text field to make that editable. And I don't like the underlined. i rather have a border on the bottom. And the difference is sometimes if somebody uses an image for their signature, it will cover up the underline. I don't like the way that looks. Also, we're going to need another text field for this caption now, the editable caption make that as big as the signature field, reduce the size a little bit, and we'll call this TXT title. And we'll call this uh, TXT signature. Sorry, the salutation should go here. And we're going to put in a, a default value of sincerely, comma, and then the person can change that if they like later on. We're going to leave that field small. We're not going to make that expand to fit, and we're not going to make that allow multiple lines because we don't need any more than just a couple of words there. We can put a default value of title here for this. And we're going to make that top justified so it, it resides right underneath the signature and possibly make that signature a little bit bigger. All right, there we are. Now we want to have an endorsement field as well. That's down here. So we'll call this TXT endorse. This is for anybody who actually types the thing out to put their initials. All right, we'll make that centered. And we're going to give this a left indent of 0.1. We're going to give all these objects a left indent of 0.1. All right, now in this paragraph, to kind of give just a, a feel for what it's going to look like when somebody starts typing, I'm going to go ahead and put in some dummy text. We're going to top justify that. Arial 10, just like everything else. Here we're going to say address here and actually we need one more I just realized we need one more we need one more text field client name that's for their name we're gonna to top justify that so it's right underneath the client name and we're gonna add one more text field right in between here between address and paragraph and we're gonna call that Dear.
leave that for somebody to fill out. Now it's kind of scrunched up everything together, so I'm going to start moving things down. Make that as big as the whole width, and then bottom justify it. Okay, so we have the basic hierarchy of our form done. We have a header subform, a footer subform, and then we have five objects here that represent all the different things we want to do in this form. Now the big question on everybody's mind at this point is how to make this flowed, how to make this flow and grow as we preview. And that's going to be the topic of the next part of the video. But for now we have this set, we have everything, we have the building blocks of our form here and I'm going to save this as form letter sample. I'm going to call this form little sample, sample 2 so I don't overwrite my other one that's already done. I save that and I'm finished. So move on to the next video, part 4, which will talk about how to make this document a flow document and what that really means. Alright, we'll see you next time.